Hi, I'm Mark Weitzman and welcome back to the uh, videos on exercises for the Feynman Lectures on Physics. Um, today I'm going to do so about six or seven problems from the Relativity chapter. I'm skipping over some stuff. I'll come back to it later. But these, um, these should be pretty easy and I um, just want to go through these. So the first problem is a particle of mass m is caused to move along a line such a way that the position is x equals square root of b squared plus c squared t squared minus b. What force f must be applied to the particle to produce this motion? Now, the first thing in looking at this problem is why are we doing this problem? Where did this come from? It seems kind of artificial and everything. Turns out, what we're doing is sort of working backwards. This is the solution, and we're going to show that it's the solution. But this is an important problem. This is called hyperbolic motion constant force problem and this will be useful in a couple of problems that we're going to do um, right after this video. So in a sense we're working backwards we're just going to verify the solution. So let me just say that force in relativity is defined as we're just talking about the three force, the usual Newtonian three force but we define it in relativity as the derivative of the momentum with respect to time. And in this video I'm working just in two dimensions. There's x and t, so nothing happens in the y direction. That's why it says along the line. And this is equal to d dt of the momentum in relativity, the relativistic momentum, which is mv over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So all we have to do really is just, um, and of course, V is equal to dx dt. So all we have to do really is just substitute x in here to evaluate V, and then take a, it looks like a mess, and it is a mess, and I'm, that's why I'm going to show it to you. I've organized it in a way that it should be fairly easy to follow the problem. So let me start with V over here. V is equal to the x dt. That's substituting x here as a function of time. That's equal to one half b squared plus c squared t squared to the minus one half. Just taking usual calculus derivatives times c squared times 2t. By the way, it's although we're using b and c here, b is just a number, c is the speed of light here. Um, and so this is equal to, b is equal to c squared t over the square root b squared plus c squared t squared. We'll need that in a couple of places. And um, using this, I can get the square root of 1 minus v squared c squared, which is defined as 1 over gamma. And this will be equal to, just plugging in this in here, it's just routine algebra. It's equal to b over the square root of b squared plus c squared t squared. So this is the second routine thing I need. I assumed here that b is greater than zero. Um, okay, now let's go to f. f is equal to d dt m dx dt over the square root 1 minus v squared over c squared. And now it's just the derivative of the product, so it's m over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared times the second derivative of x with respect to time plus m times dx dt 
times minus one half times one minus v squared over c squared to the minus three halves times minus two v over c squared times dv dt. Okay. Now, let's just calculate. We're going to need um, this thing, so let's calculate that. D2x dt2 is equal to, and we already have, um, so this is just the derivative of the velocity, so it's just the derivative of this expression here. So this is going to be equal to you know, it's just a derivative of a quotient. Okay, and this, when you combine the algebra, ends up just simplifying c squared b squared b squared plus c squared t squared to the three halves okay so this is equal to uh, x double prime t so using what's in the three boxes and substituting in this force equation, I'm going to get F is equal to M square root of B squared plus C squared T squared over B C squared B B squared plus C squared T squared to the three halves plus m c squared t squared divided by b squared plus c squared t squared times b squared plus c squared t squared to the three halves over b cubed. This is all routine calculus in algebra. And then when you cancel the common factors and simplify, it's just going to come down to m over b times c squared b squared b squared plus c squared t squared plus c to the fourth t squared over b squared plus c squared t squared is equal to mc squared over b times b squared plus c squared t squared divided by b squared plus c squared t squared. So the final result is just mc squared over b. And um, so this is a very useful result and in a sense it's sort of saying if you have a constant force, the particle will end up, that's the curve for hy a hyperbola, the particle will end up following hyperbolic motion. And in the next video, I'll, um, we'll use this and I'll derive various other ways of um, getting hyperbolic motion. And um, just to remind you, you can contact me on my uh, email address wannabetheoreticalphysicist at gmail.com or on one of my piazza.com sites and um, also on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.